Hey folks, Wayne here. Uh, today I'm uh, going out to do a little uh, little exploring. There's a uh, there's an area um, in some back country here, uh, off logging roads on on some crown land that uh, seems to have some uh, some fairly decent lakes. Um, and I'm going out to do uh, to do a scout of them today. Um, construction season is uh, not slowing down yet but it will start to slow down a little bit which might just be able to give me a Friday and a Monday off at some point uh, I'm hoping that uh, to take the Friday off of Labor Day and uh, go on a, um, a four day three night uh, trip canoe trip um, so yeah so this is an area that I've been kind of, you know, uh, looking around on Google Map. I apologize for the bumps. Uh, these things, these areas are great because they're free, uh, but they're hard to get to. Uh, at some point down this trail, which I will show you in a, in a, in a second, uh, you're basically driving at 10 kilometers an hour. Uh, due to the fact of boulders, rocks, uh, and whatever else, sometimes some uh, some downfall across the roads. Hopefully, looks like it's been fairly cleared right now. But uh, yeah, so you don't really know what to expect. So you you, you slow right down to a trickle. But nevertheless, uh, we will get there, and uh, I'll try to give you a, a little bit of a uh, little bit of shots. Uh, going down the road and, and some of the areas that uh, we've got to go through. Anyways, stick around. Hope you enjoy it. Ooh, squirrel. Sorry, bud. Didn't mean to scare you. Just give you a little tour around of what we're uh, what we're driving through. Light Hill. Really? Like there are th hundreds and hundreds of trails like this that go off, off to the side. Uh, like I said, this is an old logging road. It is no longer logged. Hasn't been for, I don't know, some years now. But, uh, yeah, you've got all these little offshoots of trails that, uh, that just, you know, head into Lord knows where. But if you, uh, when I Google Earth, it, there are like tons and tons of lakes, some smaller ones, some bigger ones. But anyways, this is, this is pretty much what we're looking at. This is, uh, yeah, getting kind of narrow. But, uh give you an idea of uh, what we're looking at here. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is how you got to get to some of these spots. <laughs> and, uh, thank God I got a four-wheel drive because I don't think I'd want to take my Honda Civic down through here. Oh, would not be good. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll show you when we get to the lake. Well, <clears throat> we have arrived. And, uh, got onto this nice sandy beach. Uh, now this lake is much larger, uh, although you can't see through the camera. Uh, I am going to assume that we, once we go through there, there's a channel that turns in and then opens up into um, a much bigger lake.
are ready. really matter um, what, what given day um, the wind just seems to be a factor uh, the calm days are few and far between and there always seems to be some kind of a, a brisk wind uh, wind paddling here but, hey, it's a small price to pay to get out and have a little bit of solitude. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's not too, too bad. I'm just behind a little peninsula, I guess you'd call it. And I'm just going to navigate myself through some uh, rocky areas and real old uh, little footbridge by the looks of it. There, I'll turn you around and I'll show you. There we are. This is looks like a, an old footbridge or something. There seems to be a little bit of a boardwalk that uh, goes out for a little bit over uh, on each side. But I should be hitting deeper water once I uh, once I get just across but maybe another 20 30 yards across this little this little bridge and uh, oh man you should see the size of the spider that's on there. <laughs> Just be basking in the sun. All right, well, we made it through. Water's already deeper. Uh, so now, just gonna take the time to, uh, to scout the shoreline and see if I can uh, see anything interesting once I paddle in a couple of kilometers. See what it's like. Check back with you later. This is really beautiful country out here. Wow. Uh, I repositioned the, the camera to uh, give you a little bit of an idea of what, uh, what it actually looks like. A little more to the side instead of straight on. But uh, yeah, this is uh, beautifully quiet. I mean, I've been paddling for probably a little over an hour. The waterways just seem to be endless. Um, I don't know if I'm coming to the end of the lake here uh, in about 600 yards or 1,000 yards or if it turns and leads into something else. But I apologize for the, the wind noise. on going. Uh, so far I've spotted one area that possibly could be promising except for a real, uh, real bad or a hard uh, landing for a canoe. But uh, yeah, still scouting around.
Well, I am still looking for something that would be of interest for, uh, for a camp out. Um, holy tamale, I am going through some very shallow rocks here. So uh, I'm going to just keep on paddling. Uh, if I don't, um, if I don't seem to find anything, what I'll do is I'll just, uh, I've got this last back here part to explore. Um, then I might just head back to where I originally was and uh, just walk in a little bit where I said that there was a, it looked like a nice spot, but it looked like the landing was a little hard. I might go and check that out. Anyways, we'll see. All right, check back with you later. One of the things that are really, you know, technology's really come a long way. We're used to have to bring a, a hand pump with you, and, and I mean, uh, for purifying water. And before that, well, you didn't even have any of these. You just had to boil it. But uh, these... Uh, Catadine uh, be free. Like I mean, really, you're out in the middle of the lake. Uh, these are backcountry lakes. There's there is no industry uh, leading to them really. And um, I still always do the habit of like trying to get into the middle of the lake more than anything else. And uh, yeah, you just take one of these. The filter is is built within this, the the mouthpiece. And uh, yeah, you just reach down and. Plus the water tends to be a little colder. She's a little tea stained, but nothing terrible. And then you just drink. Kind of has a good uh, good flow to it. Not the coldest, but hey, you got to stay hydrated. Forward. Well, I canoed across the whole place. Most of the wood was, uh, most of the woods, I should say, was uh, pretty, pretty dense. So I made myself off into here. So there's a canoe. Not ideal, but I mean, there is a good stone there, a good uh, route to tie my uh, the canoe onto. And uh, let's see what we got up here. Seems to, I don't know if this is a game trail. Could be. Looking for any signs of, of scat or anything like that. Not seeing anything. But, oh! Wow, okay. This place keeps on surprising me. For the simple reason is uh, you'd be going quite out, of, quite out of your way to uh, to make it back here, and we have look at this little kitchen area. Um, Oh, I'm blown away. A little table to, uh, to do your chores on. These are just sitting here, split in half, so they won't roll. Well, they did. They did. Uh, <laughs> they did use a couple of nails, but hey, notched out. Very cool. Hmm. Little fire pit. Which is like perfect. But look at the seating. Man. I I don't think there's any other way of getting here except 
by canoe. Like I'm, as you can see, the water is all around me that side. Going right through the woods. I hope the camera's picking this up and it just keeps on. You can see some blue. That is the water right around me. So you, uh, you can't get here any other way. Nice. Well, I'm going to call this uh, a place to stop, have a coffee. There's a lot of flat ground here that you would be able to, uh, to put a tent up or a tarp up or any of the above. Yeah. This is uh, not what I was expecting. <laughs> Oh well, let me get my pack out and I'm going to um, bring it over here, have a seat and uh, get, a little, get a little brew on. Check back with you later. Nice. So look, this is a great little spot and uh, I would have no issues with coming back here and uh, in camping, none whatsoever. Um, it's private. I haven't heard anything even off in the distance. No airplanes even, no four-wheelers, no anything. Just complete silence. So this, <laughs> this is great. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to make myself up a coffee and a lunch and, uh, and mark this on my, uh, mark this on my, uh, my GPS for sure. So let me, oh, I'm crooked. Let me get the camera set up and, uh, put the coffee on. So I'm just going to load uh, <clears throat> load up the little stick stove here with uh, sticks, go figure. And uh, I'm going to put the water on. Yeah, I, I have never ever come across a place where, uh, where there's been any kind of building whatsoever. And uh, it, it's fantastic. Um, as I was saying earlier on, uh, for me, um, I work in the construction industry, and uh, so time is is uh, like I said, not necessarily winding down. There's still quite a bit of work to be done, but uh, for me, it uh, it will definitely uh, free me up uh, to be able to take some uh, some long weekends here and there. Not too many, but some. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it because it, it has been uh, an unbelievably uh, busy season. Um, I've had basically zero, zero uh, downtime. Um, it's, been, it's been crazy. So uh, the company is heading for um, a record year. Um, workflow, financial, everything. So, uh, you know, I had to jump in and, and uh, I wanted to be part of that. It came at a, at a cost, uh, you know, but still, uh, it was something that, uh, that needed to be done. So, so yeah, so I'm just gonna get the, the stick stove prepped up, filled up, and uh, I'm gonna bring the camera angle down. A little bit and uh, we'll get this this puppy lit and then have ourselves a nice uh, well-deserved coffee and uh, and lunch so anyways just switch the camera around we'll be right back
So, put this on the stove. Put it to a boil. Get the meal and the coffee going. So while that's slowly coming to a boil. Whoa! Not slowly coming to a boil, but coming to a boil. There she goes. There. That took no time. Wow. Just gonna get the, uh, the pots ready for the coffee and a little dehydrated meal I got. There. One of the things I like about these uh, Morse pot uh, style, I've also got uh, I've got the uh, the small uh, Solo 900 pot, which I love for uh, for this kind of stuff. Um, what's so good about it is uh, you uh, you really don't have to uh, worry about. Uh, scalding yourself or, or, or anything like that it's got the uh, it's got the pour spout on it and uh, which really makes it good for lunch pretty basic I got uh, some dehydrated meat and some dehydrated corn. You mix that <laughs> with uh, did I bring it? Please don't tell me I didn't bring it. Okay, I didn't bring it. I was supposed to go with mashed potatoes. Oh, I did. Okay. A little a little bit of potatoes in there. Mix it all up. And then give her a good little mix. And this is kind of like a, uh, and I said kind of like a shepherd's pie. Let's get this going. Maybe a touch more. Just for luck. Okay. Get down. Put a lid on it. And let it sit for probably 10, 15 minutes maybe. We'll check on it later on. Sure was good. Oh, yeah. So for like dehydrating meals and just having a coffee and stuff like that, I often find that you know I just pack um, my Nalgene and I have uh, two cups. I've got the GSI uh, cup and I've got this um, this Tom shoe. Um, <clears throat> titanium cup so kind of cuts down on the weight a little bit but along with the, the the Morse pot that I have here what I'm able to do is I'm able to boil all my water uh, for both meals and still have some left over for uh, either adding to the dehydrated meal uh, that, that either needs a little more liquid or to top up my uh, my coffee but uh, it makes for a, a pretty cool little um, you know, trio of a kit. Um, usually, it's my, not my Morse pot that I have uh, with me. It's usually my um, uh, my Solo 900, <clears throat> a little smaller. I think that's a 1.1, maybe maybe 1.2 capacity in the in the Morse pot, and the uh, the other one is 900 mils, which is more than enough to rehydrate uh, a meal and and have a coffee. But uh, let's see how this is doing. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. Maybe that <laughs> little extra was uh, 
too much. But hmm, pretty tasty. I did add a little bit too much water. Um, not gonna lie, it is a little on the the soupy side. As you can see, but nevertheless, a good um, energy booster for my uh, my two and a half hour paddle back. So all in all, I came out here with no expectations except for simply trying to um, A, come out here, get in my canoe, paddle around, you know, do some, uh, do a little forest uh, bathing and, um, and just have a good day. If I would have found something, well that was a total bonus, that's all that was. And this has been a bonus, I mean somebody went to the trouble of building and man these things are like they're super super solid um, building a little area which I'm assuming that people come here and camp but again you would either have to be a kayaker or a canoeer in order to get out here because there are no trails this is a complete spruce uh, and pine uh, dominated forest. There's no hardwood in, in here whatsoever. I would assume this would get pretty buggy uh, in uh, in you know May, June, maybe early July. But um, there are enough flat places here that you could put a small tent. Um, there's definitely a room if you were to um, if you were to hammock tent which I might give a shot to this year. I have never slept in a hammock in my life. I have been a ground sleeper for as long as I've been camping. Uh, I have never, ever slept in one overnight. Um, I think I'm going to give it a shot. It opens up more options when you're... Um, when you're camping, like in wilder places that are not, you know, necessarily made uh, for camping, you can nine times out of ten always find two trees, somewhat at a good enough distance to put your hammock up. So yeah, so that's going to be a, um, a new thing for me. I'm just going to finish this up, pack everything up. Put in the canoe, and unfortunately, start heading her home. It's 4:15 right now. I have been on the water since about 10, or you know, paddling around. So um, I have about a two and a half hour paddle out of here. I uh, get back to the car. And, uh, yeah, and start planning on coming back here. If everything works out according to plan, it would be the Labor Day long weekend. And I'm going to turn it into an extra long weekend by taking the Friday off as well. So if I left Thursday, I'd be able to get here <clears throat> at supper time, or leave at supper time, get here, like, pretty late. It'd probably be real close to, uh, to dark but probably still would have enough time to just pitch the uh, the tent or the hammock. I'll see uh, by then. And uh, yeah, just camp out for a few nights and chill, relax, decompress, what it's meant to do. Okay, finish this up, pack up. Well, Back on the water. Um, I was very, very pleased to find this little spot. It's 
it's it's great when you can uh, when you can come out here and have a little designated area that you can call your own. Um, <clears throat> even though it wasn't a camp that I necessarily put together, um, it was a great little find, and uh, I'll be looking forward to coming back uh, to this uh, this beautiful spot. But you know what? It's worth every minute of it, especially to to uh, to find a nice little spot like that with with benches. So I mean, I I don't have to uh, I don't have to bring um, the uh, those folding chairs, those collapsible ones. I I picked uh, I picked one up uh, a few months ago, and uh, it doesn't look like I'm gonna have to bring it here. So I'll be able to uh, just bring. Uh, it's an old school um, canvas canoe pack, but it's it's more just like for an, uh, like an overnighter or two. It's it's probably about a I don't know, maybe a 50 liter pack, um, which will work great. Uh, don't have to bring too much gear and uh, focus on bringing a change of clothes and some food and things like that. And uh, yeah. It's gonna be, gonna be great. Like I said, this is the cherry on the cake for me. I came out here, A, to explore. Did I really think I'd find a spot? Uh, no, and did I really think I'd find a spot like that? Uh, you know, with little benches and a, a little table? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> so, this has been a pretty good day for me. Uh, really, really satisfied with the, uh, the outcome of it, and uh, yeah, what else can you say? And uh, I'm just going to leisurely take my time and, uh, and canoe right back where I started, which I'll arrive probably, like I said, in about, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half, all depends. If the winds pick up, might hold me back a little, but not too, too bad. Anyways, folks, thanks for hanging out. Um, like I said, stay tuned. There will be uh, a canoe uh, camp out, canoe camping. Uh, I would say probably definitely up within the next um, three to four weeks. Um, I, I wish I could put out more content. I really do. But unfortunately, like I said, this, this was just a, an unbelievable uh, time at work. Uh, I just wasn't able to get free, uh, even for uh, for like an overnight. I mean, at best, I would have been able to to just go out and you know have a coffee and a and a and a meal and that. And even at that, I was so exhausted by that point. I just I just needed to rest. So, but now, like I said, things are slowing down a little bit. Um, it's going to allow me a little bit more time. And uh, I'm going to be looking forward to coming out here and <clears throat> doing a um, doing a proper uh, overnighter for sure. It, it, it'll be at least a couple of nights, I'd say. You know. Uh, yeah. So I mean, hey, thanks for joining. Until next time, like usual, be good to Mother Earth. <laughs>